1996, Scholastic began publishing Animorphs. Over the next six years, Catherine Applegate and her husband, Michael Grant, under the pseudonym K.A. Applegate, produced 54 main series books, several spin-offs, and inspired a TV series, graphic novels, and a cult following. We can't tell you where we live. We can't even tell you our last names. But we can tell you our thoughts and feelings on this series, book by book. I'm Miranda. I'm Eddie. And I'm Chris. And we are... The The (laughs) Anadorks! These may be kids' books, but we discuss dark themes and mature content. There may also be some explicit language. Listener discretion is advised. Murad the Jahar. I'm sorry, where? I'm sorry, what's the, what is this ship? I'm sorry, somebody Murad has to keep this bit going. His wife. His wife. Yes. The, his wife. Okay, got it. And we've dragged Subvisor 7 along with us, and we've got Chapman and Lauren and us. We've left Arbron. Aloran's de- demorphed from his hork Yeah, uh, Aloran is demorphing. So yeah. And he's like, and oh, th- what, do you think I was trapped? <laughs> <laughs> and three things happen in rapid succession here, because, like, as they're coming aboard the ship, Elfangor really just feels his deep contempt and confusion for why Chapman's even with them still. Yeah. And then he also kind of picks up on a vibe, like, he's not as brash as he normally is. Why is he so quiet? You know, maybe he's afraid of whatever we're about to do to him or whatever we might do to him. Like, he thinks we might attack him. And then he's like, well, guess what? He deserves whatever we did to him. And that's like a very like that's a new note for Elfangor. He is fed up. And then he gets back to professionalism and he asks Aloran for orders. (laughs) Yeah. And Aloran just snaps. He's like, oh, now you want orders? I'm sorry. What? Are, yeah. What you want? You want me to boss you around now? So now when, when like, I said flush those yerks, it wasn't worth listening to me. But now that shit's getting heavy. Right. You want me to come in and clean up all your problems? Yeah. Is that what you want? So there's tension. Want, and it's like, yes, Aloran, that's what a parent does. Okay. And you're my war daddy. <laughs> my war daddy. <laughs> oh, that's so disturbing. So uh, Elfangor starts to bring up, like, the time matrix, which is his number one priority. To which Alarim responds, silence, you fool. No, he says, young silence, fool. you young fool. Sorry, Big sorry. difference. Because he is just so fixed on destroying these yerks that they, that they didn't blow up before. He's like, we can rectify that mistake. I have spent the last day and a half. He does say it's been a day and a half, right? Yes, he does say that. So we actually now know it's been a day and a half that we've been on this romp. So he's like, I've been watching that ship so that we would be able to attack it because there's tens of thousands of yerks on it and we can just blow them all away. And Alfanger's like, is that really the most important thing we have to do when the, the most powerful weapon ever is like... 200 miles that way. And yeah, Aloran, uh, the look we get is described as the mad rage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And he full faces, full faces Elfangor, just like turns his whole head. The most important thing in war is to destroy your enemies. Arist Elfangor, nothing is more important than destroying your enemies. This is my partner, H.W., I just realized. <laughs> Do you understand? He turns, he turns his stuck. I love this moment where he's like, you get it, right? <laughs> fellow, <laughs> fellow he, enemy. Yeah, he turns to like, the sub <laughs> seven. He's like, you seven, yerks, like, you know, you, you destroy. It, you? And sub It's all the good fun. Just goes, you said you would let me go. Like he's having a full temper tantrum right now. And he says, I didn't say at what altitude <laughs> I would let you go. Yeah. yeah. I want to see if you can fly. <laughs> yep. It's so fucked up. This is so fucky. It's like so dark. Just so disgusting. And, uh. For a moment, Elfangor notices some sort of nonverbal, almost impossible to see little communication happen between Chapman and this Hork Bajir, Subvisor 7. Mm-hmm. Can we just, when, when did this shift happen in Alarin? Because I feel like when we left Alarin, when we first got to the Texan homeworld, 
he hadn't, we, like, there was obviously a big tease of this side of him when he w- got upset at Alfangor for not releasing the Irks, but he wasn't fully at this point, right? No, but yeah, something... Yeah, I think you're right. Something big happened in between, and that's that he fed as a taxon. Mm. He ate another taxon. Sure. He experienced... Yeah, uh, uh, Arbron says that. He says, you don't understand. I guess, I think he says that they both fed. I'm gonna go check. I thought it was I fed. I ate. But it doesn't seem like something Aloran would object to necessarily. Like, you know, it's like... I'll never yeah. say no to a meal. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know when your next one's going to come. But this is so silly, too. Because Aloran says, slow to dead stop. He's ordering Elfangor. Yes. The, with the altitude. And he goes, altitude? Elfangor answers, 15,000 feet. Uh, we are still within the atmosphere. Airspeed is now at dead stop. And Alarin's like, dead stop. Yes, dead stop. I like that. <laughs> Appropriate. Yeah. Now open the hatch. Like, it's already <laughs> so open the theatrical. Hatch. He really is like, he was mad. He just keeps saying that. Insane. He opens the hatch. The warm taxon air blew in. Strange in the enclosed environment. It ruffled, it ruffled Lauren's, Lauren's golden, golden hair. <laughs> what color is your hair? He notices the important things. Yeah. Get out, Yurk! I cast thee out! Aloran said to the Seb Visser Seven. He didn't say that second part, but he did say, Get out, Yurk. And then, and then, and then Elfangor closes all of his eyes and kept his stock eyes focused on the instruments. And then Aloran just says, Time to close the hatch. It's over. It's over, bud. I did it. It's over. See, now that wasn't you got so bad, shot. wasn't it? You got your booster. Was it so bad? <laughs> Now you don't have to see me for a whole year. So he looks at the exterior <laughs> display screens. A tiny figure fell through the clouds. He's there he goes. Like Bye-bye. a little man dropping away. Yeah. I mean, you're so you're saying this is horrible, Chris, right? But things would be a lot better if he did actually drop Sub Visitor 7 out the hatch. Yeah? Oh, if he yeah. had actually dropped Sub Visitor 7 him, out. Yeah. But as we're about to find out. Yes. There is much yeah, yeah, yeah. going on very quickly. Yeah. 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 Oh, the book would, the series would be over yeah. if we could actually have vanquished yeah. Subvisor 7 yeah. that easily. Yeah. Chapman was watching. He seemed tense. Understandable. And yet, what made you decide to come with us? I asked Chapman. Do you expect any mercy from us? You betrayed us. You betrayed your fellow human. You've told the Yurks about Earth. You may have betrayed your entire species. He shrugged. Not my fault, though, is it? I was on the earth, minding my own business. I didn't have to be kidnapped by the script now. The Sawyer does. <laughs> high, high-pitched high Sawyer does. Uh, <laughs> from Lost does uh, Chapman. I didn't have to be dragged halfway across that galaxy freckles by you Andalites. <laughs> I was just trying to protect myself. By making deals with the Yurks? Yeah, basically, this is the weirdest statement because he's already talking to a Yurk to Chapman. He doesn't know um, that, though. Mm-hmm. He doesn't know that, but, like, he plays the part so flawlessly. Like, Chapman was so psychotic that it is undetectable that he <laughs> would be yurked. Yeah. Like, it's that Yeah, it's well, that I don't seamless. know. He goes on to, you know, when Aloran points out, you know, they don't make deals, they enslave. He goes, yeah, I guess that's what I realized after a while. Look, I'm sorry, okay? I'm just a dumb human kid, okay? Give me a break. <laughs> and I'm like, that's really believable. <laughs> yeah, that's supernatural to refer to yourself as a human like that. I guess, I guess what he's playing off here, or what he's hoping that Elfangor and Alarin will think, is that he learned his lesson because they just treated him so terribly on the taxon planet, right? Like, that's what we have to... Yeah, but he realized this. he's in over his head, and he, yeah. and he, he gives know, up, and he wants to go home. I feel like I would have such an easier time imagining Chapman as a child here if he, if they called him, like, Dan. Or Danny. Happy? Danny. And then at yeah, one point Danny. he was like, they were like, the last name. And he was like, Chapman. And then we would have had that name drop there. Yeah, yeah what, what's his name? Like, Herschel or something? Yeah, something like <laughs> that, like, yeah. yeah. It's a ridiculous, Ebenezer. like Hortense. His name is Hortense Chapman. So then, after asking Aloram for new orders, he says, nope, same old orders. We're going to go We're gonna go blow up the ship that I'm so war horny over. So they fly the his wife over to, to the Texan ship, and they get the shredders ready. And um, Aloram aims it for him because he wants to put blood on Alfangor's hands, which is so fucked. Yeah. Um, and he says, fire, Aris Alfangor. What? I said, fire. Fry those Yurks. 
You let them live. Now you finish them. Undo your mistake and no one will ever have to know about your earlier cowardice. My finger reached for the firing pad. Do it, Elfangor. <laughs> Alloran hissed. But it's Hedrick. Hedrick, Hedrick. Yes. I thought it was... I, thought it had an I, I was Hortense. surprisingly close. Herschel Hortense. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so he... Elfangor can't do it. He pulls his hand away. And as he's no. pulling his hand away, he feels Al- Alarin's tail blade press against his throat. Yeah, he's so now like, he has a fourth no. option. Now to the yeah, he's like my morals haven't changed. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. He's <laughs> like my morals haven't changed. You destroy your enemies, and I get that. But ten thousand defenseless yerks with the movement of one finger that doesn't really feel fair. And here, I mean, we've seen it. With Alorin starting to lose it about this subject in particular, and he's just like, you think you can fight a clean war, Alfangor? Is that what you think? Are you one of those who are happy enough when someone like me does the dirty work for you? What difference does it make how you destroy the enemy? What does it matter if you kill them with a tail blade or a shredder or a quantum virus? Oh, Lauren, oh, you haven't what? said this before. <laughs> that seems oddly specific. Oh, Lauren, that, just, that sounds like it might have actually been in, uh, you know, it might have been legislated again, you know? It's like, I, when I was rereading this, I thought, so Elfagor says, you? You used a quantum <laughs> virus? You used a quantum <laughs> virus on the hork wor- er, world? And then I thought that Alaric went, a quantum virus is a sort of disease of space time. <laughs> you you see it more slowly <laughs> breaks down. The but that's so in line with Visser 3. Oh, like, yeah. that's, he's like, I was very proud of it that I came Do up Do you with like it? A quantum virus, of course, is a sort of, yeah. Read the whole thing in that voice. A quantum virus is a sort of disease of space time. You see, it slowly breaks down the force <laughs> that holds subatomic particles. He's drawing diagrams. It slowly yeah. disintegrates whenever it affects. Living creatures affected with a quantum virus find their very molecules breaking down. It can take days, can't breathe. weeks of agony. <laughs> that was Aloran's secret weapon. That was that my was little the secret. secret to his barbecue. <laughs> that was the secret to his barbecue recipe that won all those <laughs> all those blue ribbons at the fair. Uh, it was just a dash of quantum virus. <laughs> the Yerks had accused us of using a quantum virus against them. We, being the Andalites, had denied it. Every Andalite believed it was just another filthy Yerk lie. Holy shit! Yeah. Elfanger is being disillusioned. It's really crazy. Mm-hmm. If you have one Aloran acting like this, you know there's others. Because here's the thing. Much like the Catholic Church, they didn't fire this guy. They just kept him around. They just moved him into the yeah. fucking training I do yeah. hope. Like I do hope, though, that... Because right now, the emphasis is on... I don't like having to say much like the Catholic no, Church. No, yeah. I feel like in this moment, though, it really feels like it's pinned on the individual. So I hope that... I mean, this th- makes sense, actually. What Alfangor will probably go to do from here is that he'll try to go up. He'll try to go up the chain of command or something, and they will... Others will be complicit in it, though. Because right now it feels like Alarin could be one bad egg kind of thing. I know they did keep him around, but it does feel like it, it's it's Alarin right now who's stepped, who went too far. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's definitely Alarin who went too far, but like it totally jives with what we've seen of the Andalites in the past to believe that they would do this. Because when mm-hmm. Axe... Yep. admits to the council or That's admits exactly to the Andalites that Elfangor broke the law, they want him yep. to say he did it instead so yeah. that they can keep their idol clean and shiny. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And if you're fixing shit on that level, where do you, where do you draw the line? I mean, yeah. why do they need their war heroes? That's a really good you point. Know? Yeah. And this is coming, I guess not right after, but a couple of books after that book. So, after, was that book eight? Yeah. 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 Okay. Chapman takes... At this opportunity, while he Alarin's cornered Alfangor because he can see him putting the pieces together here, Chapman comes and what does he do? He punches him. He punches him with he his strong him human with hands. all his fingers cl- like clenched together. Yeah. yeah, and then Alfangor swings his tail. He decides to not stop Chapman from beating up his war prince. But help Chapman beat up his war prince yep, because yep. he thinks if he lets him live that he's going to blast all these yerks. 
Right, right. Or not but, that he, if he lets him live, he... Not th- live, lets him, him stay conscious. He's not yeah. killing him. But, right. like, if he lets him stay in control, that's what's oh, going on. Oh, but then he empties a, a tranquilizer into... Mm-hmm. He tranks his boss. Yeah. So that they can get all the way out of there before he comes back, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he maybe he'll just lie. Maybe his plan is to lie and say, yeah, Chapman punched you. It was wild. And then I killed all those Yerks. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> killed the Yerks check boss. <laughs> But no, this is where this is where like this is where it gets confusing because he did side with Chapman, which is an incredibly risky move. And frankly, why didn't he just let Alloran kill Chapman? Yeah, right. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Except that he doesn't want to have to actually face Alloran here about what's going on. He sees a right. way out of the conflict and he takes it. Mm-hmm. Now, Chapman. Yeah. What is we know Chapman is acting here, but. And he, or he has other motives. So in this moment, is he trying to stop Alarin from killing the Yerks? Or is he, does he know that Elfangor, is he acting on the assumption that Elfangor will work with him here? I think a bit of both. I think he sees the fight and sees it as an opportunity to try to sort of like take the moral high ground and get mm. Elfangor more on his side. But he says later that if Alloran had been about to shoot, he would have had to try to stop him, even if it meant exposing himself. Mm. So he saw a way to try to stop him and not expose himself, I feel like is what Mm. happened here. Mm -hmm. It just occurred Mm -hmm. to me that Arbron and his relationship with the Mountain Taxons kind of mirrors Chapman with the Yerks. They're both bringing information to these outside parties and getting absorbed Mm. into their ranks because right yeah. now chapman I'm, I'm thinking chapman probably went to the yurks and said look there's a bit of tension between alfangor and alarin i wonder mm-hmm. if we could push on that a little bit so mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and the second he was yerked they'd have information they'd have all True. the information That's anyway point. yeah mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. whether he gave it up willingly or if he even saw the connection or yeah. not yeah but i mean it is nuts and This is the moment. This is where it gets real weird. (laughs) So they go to get the time matrix. Exactly. He tranks Alloran. Alloran is unconscious. And then he comes up with a plan. We're not going to kill all the Yerks. We're going to go get the time matrix. And then we're getting the fuck out of here. But he makes some pretty, pretty, he he gets some good lines about it. Chapman's like, now what? And he's like, now what? Now what? I don't fucking know. That's what now what? And he loses his mind. Mm-hmm. And he's like, we're getting the time matrix, and then we gotta go. Mm-hmm. And then... Lauren comes over and treats... Sidles up. ...his mm-hmm. wounds. Yeah. She asks, is life always this insane for you, space cadets? He manages to not comment on her golden hair. Yeah, for once. Mm-hmm. Um, he does mention on the, the bottom that she tears some fabric off the bottom of one of her artificial skins. So she's in a crop top now. And, uh, which is totally She's been tearing Ties it. a bandage yeah. around his chest. This is the second piece of clothing she has ripped, or a second time she's ripped a piece of clothing yeah. to tie a bandage on one of yeah, these Andalites. It's, it's, um, it's very silly. So she asks, is life always this insane for you, space cadets? Alfangor says, yes. Infiltrate the attacks oh, on yes. Homeworld. Help inspire attacks in civil war. Mutiny against my prince and locate the time matrix, all in the company of a pair of strange two-legged aliens, business as usual. She says, you made a joke. I didn't think you did humor, <laughs> Alfangor. So proud and of you. he says, when the world goes mad, what else can you do? And who does he think of? He thinks of Arbron, who's funny. Still making little jokes, even when his life was yeah. around. We should have we called Arbar, Arbron Arby. Mm-hmm. That would have been so cute. Little Arby. BRB. BBRB. <laughs> I thought you were leaving. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> they land the his wife in the narrow valley, a few feet away from the wreckage of the Scridna ship. And he gets a hand shredder to go cut through the ship into the storage hold where the time matrix likely is. Took him a while to carve into the ship. And while... He's several minutes. About to get it. Yeah. He's thinking. Well while he's about to get it, he's realizing there's a lot of luck involved in what's just <laughs> happened. He's thinking, it was lucky Lauren never told them while they held her captive. It's lucky that Chapman never told them about the time matrix. Huh, it's lucky. And <laughs> he starts at eight that, that just the way. Just so lucky. Ain't that just the way. Uh, just so lucky. I mean, it was lucky that and Lauren lucky never told been, them. Yeah, lucky. And, and, and that I have been lucky to hold off the Hork Bashir. 
Lucky that we have been able to get away from the spaceport without being pursued. Wait a second, that's that's awfully lucky. Oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> he's like, suddenly, <laughs> he knew. He knows what's going on in that ship while he's not there. He knows what's going on back inside the Alorn's wife. And mm. when he he's hiding, he's, he's protected by the time matrix at this exact moment. But he knew what he would see when he returned to the ship and took a couple, couple deep breaths. And then he, he leaps out. He fires three quick shots, just like Arbron. Yeah. And, and Lauren is attacking him. Mm-hmm. He fires his shredder on stun. She dropped, twitching wildly from the energy pulse. Chapman fires also. And he shoots back and hits him and Chapman drops the dirt. But then here we get the big reveal. This is big. This is big, you Very guys. Big. This is when theater meets theater. This is when Sweeney and Mrs. Lovett live happily ever after. By the sea. By the sea. This is when true love happens. This is when Romeo meets Juliet. This is when Juliet meets Romeo. This but there's Yurk inside This is Romeo. how I met your mother. Boo. <laughs> this is the Big Bang Theory. No. This is Roseanne er- first run through. <laughs> <laughs> This is the Connors. Which is to say, Alorin was no longer Alorin. Yeah. Who is it? Wait, what? Who is he? This is the first time that Elfangor laid eyes on the Abomination. It doesn't look that bad, you guys. Just a little bit of eye makeup will, you know, it'll go. But Eddie, what do you mean to say, my friend? He's, well, he's in the process of becoming Mr. Three. That's right. Actually, Elfangor says some Mr. Seven. And then he responds, yes, but not for long. The Yurk who made the first Andalite controller, the Yurk who captured the fabled time matrix, I'd say I can count on a major promotion. Wouldn't you? Wait, why does he say the Yurk who captured the fabled time matrix when he's just been, isn't he incapacitated right now? No, Aloran's walking He revived him. Right We're about to learn this. See, while yeah, it, later he, it's on, very just... hand wavy because he like tranked him up good. Yeah, but you can just give him a stimulant and they wake right back up. And so as he reveals at the beginning of logic. chapter 27, he's like, you know, I was in Chapman's head. That hork wasn't me. You guys were right. I, for some reason, really believed he made a transfer from that hork to Chapman at some point on the ship. But you are right. He did not do that. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been ballsy. But wait, he has he has stunned. He's knocked the Draken Beam out of Alorin's slash Subvisor 7's hand, right? Oh, yeah. So, that's probably the only reason we're, we're not dead. <laughs> like, Yeah. But he has the upper hand right now. So why is he feeling like he captured... The time matrix. Is it because he has? Because he thinks coming? he's going to win. He's he yeah. Thinks he's he going to win this fight. Yeah. He thinks he's going to win this fight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, he signaled their location. Yeah, and he's like, "Thanks so much for your help." By the way, <laughs> you really made this a lot easier. Yeah, I didn't know how I was going to take over him, and you knocked him out. So, good one. <laughs> I don't know why. Exactly. Elfangor lets him talk for as long as he lets him talk. Well, it is it is incredible. It's the second you if you give a visor um a lectern, <laughs> they give a lecture. Yeah. <laughs> like that's just what they do. And he's just so excited to like it's like it really is just them talking about how foolish Elfangor was and how um, how he helped to make this happen and how yeah, he was it's... he didn't even suspect that like nobody around him wasn't yerked. Elfangor would also he would listen to Subvisor Seven's podcast. Like he likes hearing him talk. <laughs> he does. He just like yeah. hearing him talk. Um, we all do. <laughs> you made Chapman a controller. You were in his yeah. head. That Hork Bajir I thought was you. Just a trick. Of course. <laughs> yeah, so he just goes on, he's like, yeah, we made Lauren a controller, and then we were just sort of, like, waiting for our chance to get the time matrix, and I wasn't sure how I was going to get an and like, body at first, but then you knocked one out for me? Very considerate. <laughs> and, yeah, Chapman told us about the time matrix, of course he did, but we had mm-hmm. to get you to show us where it was. He knew that you knew that he didn't know where it was. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So we had to get you there. But you know what the best part was, Subvisor laughed? I really couldn't have let you burn the transport ship full of Yurks. Chapman didn't know about the Yurks in that transport, so neither did I. And if you'd have gone along with Aloran, I'd have had to try to stop you, and we would have been revealed. Yeah, because he says, so, so would my brother Yurk in Lauren. Like, they would have both had to act. 
So when Lauren was dressing his wound and flirting with him about the joking. She was yerked. That was a yerk doing that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is insane. Because he did such well, a good job. Well, you know, Mr. Seven's not going to hang out with Scrubs. He's going to have, uh, they're going to be other talented actors of You're his right. caliber. Uh, that's part of his troupe. Yeah. He's bringing them together. Mm-hmm. But at the end of his monologue, finally, he he's it's like, like Team Rocket. Yeah, he just out. goes on. He's like, <laughs> wonderful. Your qualms delivered Alloran to me. Alloran and the Time Matrix. Mine. Mine. <laughs> and Elfangor gets to say, really? I seem to be the one holding the shredder. There are a dozen bug fighters closing in on you right now. You've lost, little one. Little and he's one. like, you'll be a cinder by the time they get here, bitch. <laughs> no, you won't kill a helpless foe. And he does the thing where he, like, turns and looks, you know. Yeah, he's like, oh, oh. I have He's no already weapon. dropped his weapon. He's like, I, I surrender. I, I am your prisoner. <laughs> Come ah. with me. Oh. I surrender to you, Elfangor. I surrender. He spread his hands in a gesture of helplessness. And the, this is the most This is a person boy. becoming themselves right now. Like, <laughs> yes. he's finally in the right body. Like, yes. And it's it's so sad that we have to not celebrate this in the book <laughs> just because we sided with the wrong species. It's very unfortunate when villains have gender euphoria. It is yeah. a yes. sting moment. Agreed. Yeah. It's, it's so frustrating. Well, it's like, oh, it's we, like when they come, it's like when the villain's gay and you see them doing something gay that's actually kind of nice, like love their family but they're gay and you're like well why'd you have to make the villain I like I want to support the gay guy (laughs) right right yeah no I want to support representation but not this way (laughs) he's not even threatening anybody's life he's like my crew will be here soon I'm not worried but then we get the most Jake pizza boy moment of the whole book you're right subvisor I won't kill you and then he stuns him (laughs) he stuns him and he He has a plan he shoots him but this is why I bet when when Visser Three eats Elfangor, he's a little sad because Elfangor was his first audience. This is his mm. first stage right yeah. now. Yeah, that was him. You it know, really... that was his his level up. You know, he he was a big fish in a small pond. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. he was a little scared for a moment that maybe he was gonna be. You know, if he was a big fish in a big pond, he wouldn't be a huge fish. He wasn't sure he was gonna break through. But when he finally and got to eat Elfangor, he knew. Yeah. Exactly. He knew. He knew that Vor was in his future. Mm -hmm. And he also, he also, like, that scene on the maglev is so much more beautiful. Just watching him, like, be ambitious but bored Mm. and kind of timid. And, like... He's a hork among other hork at that point. Right. Yeah, he's got aspirations and he's doing pretty well for himself, but he's not quite sure how to take the next step. Right, but he had the opportunity. He had the opportunity, and then he decides he's... Exactly, he wasn't ready to actually, like, torture the taxon control... Like, the taxon morphed Andalite. He wasn't ready for that. Mm -hmm. He instead was like, maybe I should just do what I'm told and push him out of the maglev train, you know? And then he was inspired. It's cool. He was inspired by Elfangor when he he Yeah, when he lost his chance once, and then Chapman gave him a second chance, he was like... I'm not going to miss it this time. I am not throwing away my shot. shot. I am not. <laughs> you, are, you are kicked off this podcast. You are out of here. Now. <laughs> you're gone. Um, but you're not wrong. And that's that's true. How does an so, orphan, yerk, son of a ged controller. Like- <laughs> <laughs> so he gathers all of his friends' bodies and puts them in the My Wife, and he's he's like, okay, we gotta we gotta, like, get out of here. Like, we just in time got the time matrix. I've incapacitated the thing. And his plan, he plays the subvisor. Mm-hmm. He, yeah. like, phones it in. Actor becomes Act D. So he, <laughs> he's, like, he gives him another stimulant so that he'll wake up soon. This is where they shove in that explanation that there's a stimulant that can wake him up in within a minute. <laughs> but a, presumably he's at four doses. He's at two <laughs> trank doses and two stimulant doses back to back, like all in a 20 minute period. Oh my like, God, he feels great. This kid's heart is racing. No <laughs> wonder he's so theatrical. Yeah. So he gets back to the ship. He he leaves the subvisor's body on the ground. The bug fighters come in. 
They're preparing to land. He goes to the Jahar. He goes to Alloran's wife. He closes the hatch and he gets in the ship communication and he prays on the fact that they can't tell Andalites apart. <laughs> and he pretends to be Subvisor 7, <laughs> despite yeah, not really what? looking anything like Lauren. <laughs> you don't recognize your Subvisor? Ha ha! I've done it, you fool! <laughs> As, <laughs> As I said I, I, said would. I would! I have acquired an <laughs> I've Andalite acquired body. The Andalite body! <laughs> and so he convinces them, and he's like, you see that Andalite land on the ground who looks like he's about to come to? That Andalite, you need to kill. I want him so... So dead. So dead. <laughs> well, actually, just really yeah. very dead. But make it, him I'm, run for it. Yeah. Make it like make him work for it, and then kill it. But yeah. When his Which, knees give out with exhaustion, make him make him dead. They do say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> make him dead. Dead. Yeah. And if you fail me, I will feed you to the taxons. And then he takes off. This part's pretty comical, Let's actually. Because he just gently, sort of like gingerly drives away, waving from the. <laughs> He does the little like, Tulu wave. Yeah. He does, yeah. And he just, he he just casually, conference. he's like, because he doesn't want to make it clear that he's running away. So he's like, ah, bye bye, bye bye, oh, tutu, 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 tutu. And then he's got the time matrix and he's going. He, it's lashed with energy ropes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> to place it <laughs> really weird. in energy ropes. <laughs> Into the <Yeah>. mind <laughs> belly. <laughs> energy ropes are the hero of this yeah. book. You're like, right. There are energy ropes lashed all across. Alloran's wife's belly. That's right. That's what they say. (laughs) I didn't say that. And he punches up a hard burn and prepares to lose himself in zero space. And and not long after he takes off, an ugly, suspicious Hork-Bajir face glared at me. Subvisor 7, planet control respectfully directs you to land. They're starting to piece it together. He tries to bluff some more, which we don't get to see. I'm a little disappointed. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm imagining that he was like bluffing, but kept forgetting to push the push to talk button. <laughs> he's like, so oh, Loren oops, sorry, is, like, these Andalite like, hands. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, he's like, what do you mean? Are you respectfully request? And then he's like, oh shit, what do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> like, he can't get oh, the timing fuck, right oh, on fuck. it. They're going to know I'm not pissed off. Oh, I'm not hitting the button. <laughs> I hit the button while I was saying Loren, that yeah, I'm Loren, Loren's like, you're hitting the button right now. <laughs> She's like, that he has voice detect on. And he's like, oh, no. no. <laughs> A swarm of bug fighters follow him off the planet, but he is already gone, and they, he escapes into zero space. What's going to happen? Find out next week on The Books You Could Read Yourself or The Anadorks. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Anadorks. We'll be back soon with lots more to say. Until the Andalites return, or at least until next time. See you soon.